What year was this? This was ninety six. That's when I went to. That's when I first went to school, to uh, college, and I was there to I guess about ninety eight, ninety nine. Uh-huh, yeah. And I had my daughter around that time too, so that also made the decision to drop out a little easier. Yeah, yeah. In the nineties, um, yeah, the computer was really hitting strong. Yeah. I know. I heard about computer illustration in ninety one. I was in the Marine Corps. And um, I, I was hustling, man. Um, I was designing T-shirt. I was doing T-shirt designs, pre-selling them, and then uh, taking that money and ordering the shirts, and then uh, and then handing people their shirt. Okay. And um, and then uh, some of the people, they worked in offices. I, w- I worked in the office, and they said, oh, "You need to come over here and, and uh, draw with this computer." I was like, "Man, nobody draws with computers. What is that?" Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shit. That's the boat. Right there. Anyways, oh, yeah. You always think about that sometimes. <laughs> so, so you um, so you now you're you drop out because you you don't care for the academic stuff. And what's your what are you doing? What's you doing? What are you doing with your art career? Or are you just gonna go for a job? Well, I moved back to Atlanta with my with my family, and I well. And I really gotta credit my mother to all of this. If I wasn't, if it wasn't for her, I definitely wouldn't even be a tattoo artist. But um, she had this thing where she would always keep some of my art in her car, and because whenever we would go out someplace, she would if she knew anybody that did art, she'd be like, "Hey, come here, come talk to this guy, come talk to this guy." And I'd be like, uh, "Oh shit, okay, okay." So one day she actually did meet this guy who was a tattoo artist, and he looked at my stuff. He was like, oh, you ought to go down here and talk to this guy. He might be able to. So I was like, okay, cool. I didn't have any tattoos. I didn't know anything about tattoos, never thought to be a tattoo artist. Mm. But I just figured it was another discipline like anything else art-related, so I could probably be you know, at least decent at it. So, um, yeah, long story short, went in, met the guy. He liked my work, and I started my apprenticeship at um, Alien Touch Tattoos in Five Points Mall the flea market huh yep. five points five yep. points mall. his name was Mario Neumeyer okay and it was a flea market but it was probably the cleanest shop that I've ever worked in like just immaculate like it, just the fact that it's in a flea market it gets a stigma automatically but mm-hmm. you know he had his shit together man like I mean talk about cross contamination like it was so bad like if I had my gloves on if like I just finished doing the tattoo and I had my gloves on and I touched the doorknob you know, I'd have to screw the doorknob off and throw it in the trash. You know, that's how anal he was. Wow. Like, you know, so mm-hmm. I learned a lot on that tip. Now, he wasn't the greatest artist. That was the thing. He wasn't an artist at all, but he knew how to operate it, so he taught me how to do that. But that's the one thing that I do kind of regret. Like, if I was really into it, like, I probably would have seeked out a better apprenticeship from a more, you know, um, skilled artist. But, you know. Yeah. So, what, um, so, you went in, showed them your work, and they offered to teach you. Mm-hmm. And this is in the 90s, yeah. late 90s. This is probably, uh, this is actually 2000. 2000? Yeah. Yeah, there was still a few shops still in town. Yeah. It's time to grow. Yeah, yeah. It mm-hmm. wasn't like it is now, but it was still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. And um, so, what are you, um, so what is your goal now? What do you think about yourself as an artist? What do you want to do? You just um, jump into tattoos and you're cool? Or where did the idea for comics and paintings come from? Well, um, the comic book, actually, if I didn't, if I never became a tattoo artist, the comic book never would have happened because that was the whole thing that sparked the idea where the, you know what I'm saying, the customers that I would meet, the scenarios I would be in, that all came from doing tattoos. So if I didn't tattoo, I definitely wouldn't be doing comics, which is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Tattooing right now for me, I'm a little burnt out on it in general just because, I mean, it's been about 15 years. And I feel like that's a long time to do anything, you yeah. know, just solely do that one thing. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm really burnt out on it, man. Like, if I don't have to, if I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't do it at this point, you know. Um, I would focus solely on my book and storytelling because that's really, that's really, really what my passion is. And tattooing is nice. It just pays the bills pretty good right now and for a while. And um, But I love it because... Is technically, I've always been able to make a living doing art, even though it might not be my own art, it might not be my own vision or designs. And mm-hmm. you know, we do tattoos; you have to cater to other people and their their designs, which is another thing that's got me kind of burnt out. Like sometimes I want to paint 
Or sometimes I want to work on my book, but I have to stop and do this tattoo, and I'm like right. using all that creative juice on somebody else's stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, man, I don't have no more juice left. Now oh, I'm tired. Yes. yes and now yeah. I gotta work. To, now I gotta work on it tomorrow. Hopefully, I won't have to do a tattoo, and I can get these commissions done or my book done or something. Uh-huh. But you know, it pay the bills, man. But I could be doing something else to pay the bills that I, that would take me away from art. Uh-huh. And I know a lot of people that I went to college with that they just get caught up in that day-to-day grind, man, that they don't even draw anymore. Like, yeah. not even for fun, yeah. you know? And I'm like, yeah. damn, like, dudes that were bad, I'm like, you don't even do it anymore, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm just grateful for that. Like, even though I'm doing other people's stuff, I'm still, my hand's still moving every day, you know? Yeah. So. So, um, so tattooing, that's how my my tattooing, uh, they started People Love My Art. They kept telling me to go uh, check out a tattoo shop, go over here, go over there. And I'm like, nah, nah. I wanted to do comics. Right. Uh, and um, that's not, I came to Atlanta just to survive somewhere else outside of L.A. or the Marine Corps. And, um, but, but I wanted to find a way to, to draw comics. I didn't know anything about it. And somehow tattooing was it. They, 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 um, a friend of mine drove me to a tattoo shop. And uh, Western Tattoo, and he dropped me off in the front. He said, you should go in there and show him your work. And I always carried my portfolio all the time. I always carried um, my uh, drawing book and pencils and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I did. And they asked me, uh, so they looked at my work. An old girl, uh, what was her name? I forgot her name. Um, uh, Julie. Mm-hmm. She looked at my yeah. work. She said, you want to learn how to do tattoos? And I said, um, Sure. I didn't really think about it as a serious thing, you know. Right. But yeah, but it's art, it's drawing, and it pays the bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And every now and then you get to do some stuff you really like to do. Right? You know? Yes, it's not yes. all bad. You right, know? right. So. I still do tattoos today, and and that was for a long time. I was burnt out, yeah. and that's why I shut down the shop, okay. um, and because uh, I didn't feel like it anymore. And uh, but but uh, the people don't leave you alone. Right. Your clients, you know, even if it's once a year, they'll call you. Yeah. And, uh, and you're like, you know what, I'll, I'll take some of that money. It's hard to be like, no, I don't want that money. You know? Yeah, uh-huh. money. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, <clears throat> but then now you pick and choose, you know, mm-hmm. the, the ones you're going to do. And the ones you don't want to do, you charge them extra. Right. And oh, if yeah. they pay, then, okay, now I, I guess I got to do this now. Um, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, damn, I would thought you was going to say no. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was out of his budget. <laughs> Um, um, but you know, uh, and then you you um, charge real cheap for the stuff you really want to do. You're like, mm. I, I, this one I hear, I have to do this. Right. I have to do this. Oh yeah, that's so right. it's a give and take. It's a it's a struggle and it's a give and take. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I feel you on it, brother. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So um, you're a tattoo artist, and your main character, Merce, mm-hmm. is a tattoo artist. Yes. He's a vampire. Yes. And the comic book is called Day Black. Yes. And uh, it's uh, it's crazy sounding because the day is usually daytime with the sun out. Right. But this is black, so it's usually black you think at nighttime. Right. Um, where did where did the beginnings of that come from? It's, it's in, you say you were a tattoo artist already, so fine. I, we can we can see that connection. But vampires. Yeah, vampires, man. I don't know where that came from because I'm not really that big of a vampire fan. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. But um, man, I don't know where that shit came from. I know the, the maybe it was just the correlation of blood and tattooing and somewhere mm-hmm. in my brain it just kind of yeah it all just kind of linked up together. I don't know where exactly it came from, but um, you know, and I just like to. Anytime I do anything, as far well, as far as how his merce, as far as how he was created, um, I was just drawing and sketching. And usually, when I draw, I'll draw first, and then I'll look at it and I'll get the story based on what I drew. So he was just a character that I drew, and I came away and I thought he looked cool. Um, and then it just it just began during those slow seasons, during those winter months where it was just slow, and I was just drawing mm-hmm. these characters. Uh, these girls with this crazy hair they would come in and just you know just in the middle of five points in the city in the summertime or even in the wintertime it was just so many characters down there and it was really just easy and um but the thing is that book and that character is going through so many changes since that first time like it didn't even like it may have been five or six years he wasn't even a vampire yet he was just a guy that was doing tattoos Mm -hmm. and i don't know for whatever reason 
it, it just it just turned into that way, man. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like he was a superhero by night and tattoo artist by day, or yeah, and uh, and even the thing with like HIV, how uh, the blood was contaminated with HIV just to kill vampires. I just like to take a lot of stuff that really happens in the world and incorporate it uh-huh. because I feel like um, stuff like that, people, it does a lot of the work for you because people already have that knowledge of what HIV is and that fear of it. So that automatically adds a layer to what you're doing. So people are like, okay. So, um, but a lot of the things in the book have a lot of uh, like connections to like pop culture and what goes on mm-hmm. like today. So, um, Create your own conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why I like not? doing that too. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not? Mm-hmm. Very cool. And um, and so now, so for 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 years, you, he was just a character you drew, and then they decided the day came when you decided that he's a vampire. Yeah. And then there's a story that goes with it, and and when did you say to yourself, "This is gonna have to be a comic book"? Let me just start start drawing it now. Right. Um. I went to a, I think I went to a portfolio day at SCAD, and there was an artist there, I can't remember her name, but she looked at my stuff and she saw some pictures of him and she was like, your paintings and stuff are nice, but you need to focus on storytelling and possibly comic books, because I could tell like sequential art and like storytelling is your strong point. Mm -hmm. So this was a lady that I really respect, well, I don't remember her name, <laughs> but I really, but I really liked her work, and I really, I really loved her work, man. So that was like, that was like just the, my idol, not my idol, but somebody really like coming down telling me, here, this is what you need to do. Right. And that was the clearest path anybody ever told me what I wanted to do. So um, that was what made me do it and kind of go a little bit harder in it. And um, but I was just so mad. Cause I was like, damn, I took that uh, fucking. Uh, comic book class, but I don't remember any of the shit that they told me because <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't, I'm just gonna do it. I don't want to do it. Uh-huh. So, uh, so a lot of the stuff that I do, and which I really think why the book looks like it does, because a lot of the reviews that I get, a lot of people say that it does, I don't approach it the uh, normal way that you do comic books, uh-huh. and I think that's a part of that is because I don't remember what the hell they told me to do. Uh-huh. But even though I read comic books as a kid, I just didn't want to. I don't know, man. Like it had to, like a lot of those panels. You know, like you draw all a bunch of little panels, and sometimes it's really mundane stuff, like people just having a conversation. Like I just don't want to draw that stuff, man. Like it's got to be fun for me to really want to do it. Mm-hmm. So I just said, um, if I'm gonna do it, I really don't have any pressure to do it. I'm just kind of doing it as just something that I want to do. So I didn't really have any kind of expectations from anybody. So I just did it how I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Some pages are just full illustrations. It might be two or three pages in a row like that, where it might read more like a like a kid storybook instead of like a traditional comic book. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it, that's been his workout so far, man. So you know, what uh, what kind of training did you um, seek out when you were writing a story as a writer? Well, I was always a big always a big movie buff. Um, when I went to CCAD, I actually majored in film when I first got there because I just didn't want to go and just do exactly what I knew I could do. I wanted to try something different, and I was always in the movie, so I'd always buy screenplays from, uh, you know, like Quentin Tarantino would publish the screenplays for his movies, uh, Kevin Smith, Oliver Stone, all of the, the really good movies. I had stacks of screenplays. So um, There used to be catalogs where you can buy them from. Yeah. I remember uh, ordering stuff like that. From magazines, the back of a magazine mm-hmm. would sell you screenplays and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I really don't even think I don't even think that really got big until Quentin Tarantino came out. Because mm-hmm. I think when he won the Academy Award for Pulp Fiction, it's just like it just kind of blew the doors open for a lot of stuff in general. And um, and for me, that movie just really just changed my expectations of what a movie could be. It it, it, it just wasn't just going to the movies just for like yeah, I went to a movie. Now it was like really serious and that really had an impact on me and my storytelling and my sensibilities and everything like that like that movie right there is like pivotal pivotal for me creative creative wise Mm -hmm. so um and so you had a guide for how to write a script yeah i did and even though i wouldn't write a script to like years and years later but um i i I always like to write. I just don't like to physically write because it just, it's, I just hate writing a long time. Mm-hmm. But um, so you type your stuff? No, I, I do write. It. I type it when what? I'm done writing it. Oh, you write it with scratches. Scratch. Uh huh. You know, but um, but I, but but the thing is, I never considered myself to be a writer, even though I knew I had really, 
I always thought that I had really good